I guess you could say I enjoyed my week off. Gnosis is found wherever Sophia walks and is not dependent upon any school of thought. It's where sexual energy is deposited within ourselves, it's where our vitality, our creative energy is there. Mind, body, and spirit will be called today the three major divisions of uh, philosophical thinking. Right. Basically what this is depicting is the person who has self-realization unifies his body, mind, and spirit in such a way that he or she can ascend to the various dimensions of psychic exploration. Spiritual creativity, and even in the worlds of science, the knowledge is depicted in the book, understand astronomy and cosmology of other worlds we would call today parallel evolution. Right. You can be Christed if you find the feminine. Ah. If you do not find the feminine within you, you can be tormented by a judgmental God or a system of belief that suppresses the inner psyche. Greetings, fellow worker slaves, podcasting at 128 kilobits from the Fortress of Squalitude, not far from the Redneck Mecca. This is the Atheist in the Trailer Park podcast. I'm your host, Tucker. Professor Fuzznuts is curled up in my arms, giving me a dirty look because I'm not cuddling him and him talking. Ash is curled up on my bed, and the new cat is still hiding. Yes, it's a podcast hosted by a guy named Cats. Get over it. This is a Pista Sophia episode where Skullbeard and I read a few chapters from the Pista Sophia. Next episode will be a news episode. I spent most of my week off puttering around the house. I made some progress on some of the things that I wanted to get done around here. Not as much as I would have liked, and really few people would be able to tell that I've done anything at all, but it was still something. I also think that I've come up with a name for the new cat. I've at least found one that might fit the little guy. He doesn't meow, he squeaks. So I've taken to calling him Lord Squeakington. He still won't have anything to do with me, but I've made a bit of progress, I think, in getting him to trust me. Every other day, I have to give Fuzznuts a can of wet food, otherwise he has the annoying habit of barfing all over the house. If I give him a daily can, he doesn't eat all of it. Naturally, for the sake of fairness, and yes, animals like cats and dogs do have a sense of fairness, I give Ash a can as well. I was letting Ash and Lord Squeakington split a can, but the other day when I put Ash's can out, I noticed that Lord Squeakington would desperately start to dart out to nibble on the can, only to spot me and then race back under the bed. So what I've started doing is putting out a can for everybody, and then just hanging out in the bed while Ash and Lord Squeakington eat. Lord Squeakington is a bit paranoid about this and will dart back and forth between the can and hiding under the bed. I just lay there the whole time and while I'll talk to him I won't make any moves towards him or do anything to upset him. He knows I'm there watching him and as he's racing to hide back under the bed will stop and stare at me. I just stay in my spot and close my eyes. That's supposedly cat body language indicating that you trust the other cat. Hopefully this will help him come and trust me. Then I can work on introducing him and Fuzznuts to each other in hopes that they'll try not to kill one another. Lord Squeakington and Ash seem to be great friends. Even with two cans of wet food out for them, Lord Squeakington will wrap himself around Ash and try to nose his way into Ash's can. Ash doesn't even growl at this, so that tells me the two of them get along quite well. Um, and the other thing I discovered last night is that if Lord Squeakington thinks I'm asleep, he will hop in the bed and roll around. Now, as soon as I move, he immediately hops off the bed. But again, I think it's a bit of progress in that he uh, doesn't, you know, that he gets, he's willing to get up in the bed and play around when he thinks I'm asleep. Two other bits of news before we get to Skullbeard and I going through more of the Pista Sophia this week. And I have to say that this section is better than most of the previous sections. Granted, that's not saying a lot, but at least it doesn't feature them rambling on about various psalms in ways that don't make any sense. 
The first is I got a call the other day from an ex-roommate of mine whom I'll call Alice, though she'd no doubt hate that name if she knew I was referring to her by it. We haven't talked in a couple of years, and she was having car problems and wanted to know what I thought might be causing them. To go all soap opera -y here for a moment, I met Alice because she was the ex of a gal I was dating at the time. My ex later flaked out and bailed on me, right about the time that Alice had decided that she had to get out of where she was living. So a couple of days after my ex moved out, Alice moved into the back bedroom of the trailer. This was actually good for me, since I probably would have gone absolutely batshit had I been living alone after my ex left. Now, one of the things that I did while Alice was living here was I showed her how to work on cars. I did this because mechanics often take advantage of women, and if Alice knew how to work on cars, even if she didn't do the repairs herself, she'd be able to spot if the mechanic was trying to bullshit her. The problem Alice described could have been just a few things. According to her, she was having a problem stopping the car and the front tire on the driver's side was really vibrating. This means that it's most likely a problem with the tire, the wheel weights on the rim, the CV joint, since the car were, the car is front wheel drive, or a, struck, stuck, or a stuck brake caliper. In talking with Alice, it seems most likely to be a stuck brake caliper. I can't fully rule out the other items since she couldn't check on some of them when she was talking to me, and some of the others she was certain it couldn't be them, though she didn't check. She'd recently had the brakes done on the car and asked them to check the caliper, but they assured her that it was fine. When I said that I thought it was probably the brake caliper, she was incensed at the shop she had taken her car to. Understandably, of course. I got the details about where she was living and what shop she'd taken the car to. She told me, and it wasn't one I'd heard of. So I recommended a place that I'd taken my car to when I was living where she is now. Of course, thanks to Trump's America, she really doesn't have the money to get them to fix her car. Understandable, of course. So she's going to help me with a couple of things around here, and it's... And in exchange, I'm going to fix her car, assuming I can. If it turns out that her CV joint is bad, then that's not something I'm willing to tackle. My eldest brother has a lot more experience working on cars than I do, and when I mentioned fixing the CV joint on a car I owned in the past, he said that it's one of those jobs that are so difficult, you're better off paying someone else to do it. I'm not about to argue with him on the subject. But I also know what it's like to be so poor that you have to bite the bullet and do the repair yourself. I mention all of this because it's one of the things that I've ran into so many times. Not merely being poor that you have to rely on either yourself or a friend to fix a problem, but that people don't think that women are capable of understanding car repairs. Every girlfriend I've ever had, I've made a point to show them how to work on the car if they didn't already know, and most of them didn't, for exactly the same reasons why I showed Alice how to work on cars when she was living here. I realize that not everyone has the necessary aptitude, for whatever reason, to be able to work on their own vehicle, but if you don't try to show them, then there will never be any chance that they could learn. I mean, I've got a friend who grew up in a very rich, very white family who can't figure out how to check the air in his car tires all because he's never been shown and has decided such things are impossible for him to learn. This is despite the fact that he's got a couple of master's degrees and can do all kinds of shits w with computers that I can't. He knows them because he could afford he knows how to do stuff with computers because he could for afford to take them. He knows how to do the stuff with computers because he could afford to take the necessary courses while well, I couldn't. I could rant about this for hours because not only have I heard many men say that women are incapable of doing certain things just because of their gender, but also because I've heard women say that men are incapable of doing certain things because of their gender, both of which are absolute bullshit. One of these days I'll let myself get wound up about the subject, but not today. Another thing that I want to mention is that this past week I was a guest on the Apologetics, that's Apologetics with an I-X, podcast. I'm not sure when the episode will go out, but I'll have a link in their show notes to their podcast if you're interested in checking them out. 
Finally, it being the first of the month, I absolutely want to thank everyone who's supporting the show via Patreon. Due to my work schedule, if it weren't for you folks, my car fund would be down to zero dollars. With your most recent car with your most recent contributions, I'm up to about 150 bucks. Granted, that's not a lot, but one of the things Alice told me about is that there's a place near where she lives that has cars for sale that are dirt cheap. Even if I don't manage to save any more from my paychecks this year, your contributions will give me enough to be able to get a car by the end of the year. Assuming, of course, that the economy doesn't implode before then. And I'll add that you folks can expect some bonus content by the end of this week. Possibly a lot. Okay, now on to Skullbeard and I delving into more of the Pistis Sophia. Jesus continued again in the discourse and said unto his disciples, When I shall have gone into the light, then herald it unto the whole world, and say unto them, Cease not to seek day and night, and remit not yourselves until ye find the mysteries of the light kingdom, which will purify you and make you into refined light and lead you into the light kingdom. Say unto them, Renounce the whole world and the whole matter therein, and all its care and all its sins, in a word, all of its associations which are in it, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from all the chastisements which are in the judgments. Uh Say unto them, Renounce murmuring, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the fire of the dog-faced one. Uh, would that be Anubis? Say unto them, Renounce eavesdropping, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the judgments of the dog-faced one. Sounds like Anubis. I just read something almost identical to that. (laughs) Yep. Say unto them, Renounce litigiousness, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the chastisements of Ariel. Um, uh, Wait, who's Ariel? Uh, Sounds like a watery tart. Um, think it's an angel, could be a demon, but I was just thinking that, you know, the... Uh, massive anti-Semitic laws that Europe had for years, which uh, forced uh, Jews to be either in the financial sector or lawyers, um, you know, know, if you're saying renounce litigiousness, uh, that kind of makes it hard for them. Yeah, stop suing people, yeah. Mm. Ariel was an angel found primarily in Jewish and Christian mysticism and apocrypha. The literal meaning is lion of God. Uh, and here I thought she was just a little mermaid. Yeah, me too. Yep. Shows what I know. Yep. Say unto them, renounce false slander that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the fire rivers of the dog-faced one. Fuck, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Say unto them, renounce false witness. Wait, didn't we just do that? Yeah. That ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and that ye may escape and be saved from the fire fire rivers of the dog-faced one. Which... (sighs) Yeah. Say unto them, Renounce pride and haughtiness, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the fire pits of Ariel. Say unto them, Renounce belly love, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the judgments of Amente. Amente? A-M-E-N-T-E? Say unto them, Renounce avarice, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the fire rivers of the dog-faced one. So, uh, I'm guessing lava? I don't know. Say unto them, Renounce love of the world, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the pitch and fire coats, coats, not goats, of the dog-faced one. 
Fire goats would probably actually be pretty cool. Say unto them, Renounce pillage, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the fire rivers of Ariel. Say unto them, Renounce evil conversation, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the chastisements of the fire rivers. And there it trails off, but let's face it, we all know what that means. It's either the dog-faced one or fucking Ariel. Yep. Say unto them, Renounce wickedness, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the fire seas of Ariel. Ariel, little mermaid. Mm -hmm. On a sea of fire. Sweet. Must be near one of those BP oil rigs. <laughs> Say unto them, Renounce pitilessness, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the judgments of the dragon-faced ones. Hey, something new. Oh, boy. Say unto them, Renounce wrath, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the fire rivers of the dragon-faced ones. So we got Amente, Ariel, the dragon-faced ones, the dog-faced ones. Everybody's got their own fucking fire rivers and seas. You think? Seems like. Say unto them, renounce cursing that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the fire seas of the dragon-faced ones. Whatever. Yeah. Say unto them, Renounce thieving, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the bubbling seas of the dragon-faced one. Say unto them, Renounce robbery, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be shit saved from... Uh, what the fuck is that word? Yalgababoth? I have never, ever heard anything about this before. So, we're off to the Googles. <laughs> oh. Apparently, it's another name for Demiurge. Uh, okay. And uh, in the Platonic, Neopythagorean, Middle Platonic, and Neoplatonic schools of philosophies, the Demiurge is an artisan-like figure responsible for fashioning and maintaining the physical universe. The Gnostics adopted the term Demiurge, although a fashioner, the Demiurge is not necessarily the same as the creator figure in the monotheistic sense, because the Demiurge itself and the material from which the Demiurge fashions the universe are both considered to be consequences of something else. Depending on the system, they may be considered to be either created and eternal or the product of uh, some other entity. So they, in fact, could be made out of God shit. Uh, <laughs> okay, but they're employed God shit, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, I mean, it could be that they've made the universe out of uh, God's turds. Well, I suppose. I, I mean, that would explain a few things. Yeah. Say unto them, renounce, renounce slandering that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the fire rivers of the lion-faced one. Say unto them, renounce fighting and strife that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the seething rivers of Yaldabaoth. Say unto them, renounce all unknowing and ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the servitors of Yaldabaoth and the fire seas. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. Evil doings. Yeah. It's 216. Say unto them, renounce evil doing, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from all the demons of Yaldabaoth and all his judgments. Say unto them, renounce sloth. What the fuck did sloths ever do to you, man? That ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the seething pitch seas of Yaldabaoth. Now, mind you, I can understand why you'd want to renounce um, Aerosmith because Steven Tyler, and Steven Tyler does actually have a pet sloth, so, but um, sloths in general, they seem pretty cool. Just hang out, sleep yeah. a lot. 
Yep. Nope. Too quick. Yep. Say unto them, renounce adultery, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light kingdom, and be saved from the sulfur and pitch seas of the lion-faced one. Say unto sure. them, renounce murder, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the crocodile-faced ruler. Uh, which Egyptian god is that? This one who is in the cold? Wait, crocodile? Well, alligators at least know how to survive freezing temperatures. I don't know about crocodiles, but... Uh, so All maybe, right. Um, is the first chamber of the outer darkness. Say unto them, Renounce pitilessness and in piety, and ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from the rulers of the outer darkness. Say unto them, Renounce atheism. No. Mm. Fuck you. <clears throat> Prove it. Uh, renounce atheism that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the howling and grinding of teeth. Say unto them, renounce magic potions that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the great cold and the hail of the outer darkness. Say unto them, renounce blasphemy that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and be saved from the great dragon of the outer darkness. Say unto them, Renounce the doctrines of error, that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light, and be saved from all the chastisements of the great dragon of the outer darkness. That'll work. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, the um, the owl, uh, the crocodile god is Sobek, Sebek, Sebek Ra, Sobek, Sucho, Sobiki, and or Soknopias depending on whatever fucking thing that you use as, um, you know, your source. Uh, so, I, I'm going guess he's Egyptian? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, when we're talking about things like this, you're always going to the Egyptian gods. Um, and uh, I will send you a link about the alligators living in a frozen fucking swamp. Just to give you nightmares, man. <laughs> they wouldn't last through our winters. Uh, well, they may not last through yours now, but global warming, baby. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, they, they actually can survive in temperatures as cold as we get here. Hmm. Okay. Which is considerably warmer in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it's, um, uh, you know, give it a few weeks. <laughs> yep. And uh, you'll never have another gold winter again. All right. Uh, Actually, they're not getting warmer. They're just getting more brutal than I remember. Well, ours are getting warmer, although they are punctuated with periods that are more brutal than I remember. Mm -hmm. But there, you know, the brutal periods aren't lasting all that long. Nope. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, I mean, it used to be like snowy and really cold for months at a time. Now we get like, you know, a week of really cold temperatures and the rest of the time it's well above freezing. Huh. I'm a little bit jealous. We had six weeks of cold. Yeah. We usually get six weeks of cold, January through mid-February. Sometimes it's later, sometimes it's earlier. Yeah, well, we used to always, like, get an ice storm at the first week of February. That's, mm -hmm. that's no longer happening. <laughs> nobody misses an ice storm. <laughs> uh, nope. Okay. Uh, let me take a stab at this. Um... Say unto those who teach the doctrines of error and to everyone who is instructed by them, Woe unto you, for if ye do not repent and abandon your error, ye will go into the chastisements of the great dragon, well, that's better than going into his belly, and of the outer darkness, which is exceedingly evil. And never will ye be cast up into the world, but will be non-existent until the end. Say unto those who abandon the doctrines of truth of the first mystery, Well, unto you, for your chastisement is sad compared with that of all men. For 
ye will abide in the great cold and ice and hail in the midst of the dragon and of the outer darkness and ye will never from this hour on be cast up into the world but ye shall be frozen up in that region and at the dissolution of the universe ye will perish and become non-existent eternally now this sounds an awful lot like um dante's inferno i have not read dante's inferno well, probably the, someday yeah it's basically <laughs> a polemic about assholes that he knew at the time it's no oh. it's not really based on anything um you know, like religious no. texts, but it's, you know, it's basically just him, you know, doing a giant fuck you to people he knew. <laughs> and the, yeah. um, it's, it's kind of the basis that most modern Christians, um, base their, their conception of hell on though, isn't it? <laughs> eh, sort of. Um, <laughs> And the brimstone and the devils and the pitchforks and the right, right. But the innermost region of hell is a frozen wasteland where um, the damned uh, are frozen up to their noses, and Satan hangs out there and just flaps his wing to blow cold air across them. And it's curious because. Assuming that this document is as old as presumed, in other words, you know, the whatever the document this translation was made from, it predates uh, the um, the Inferno. Right, it predates the Inferno and was unknown at the time in which the Inferno was written. Uh, of course, if uh, this is a forgery, which we have no way of knowing. <laughs> then um, maybe somebody cribbed some shit from the Inferno. Yeah, there does seem to be some anachronisms in here. I don't know. Yeah, well, there's also translation weirdness that ha naturally crops up. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it, it, I, There's a really respectable translation of... Uh, of the Odyssey by Robert Fitzgerald. I think that's who does it. I mean, it's the one that I have reread the most often, and it is, uh, you know, he's a credible translator, and he translates certain Greek terms for metal as steel. Even though steel did not exist at the time the works were written, and his reason for right. using that is to give modern readers the understanding that the weapons he's talking about are made of a very fine metal and better than your standard weapons at the time. So not a bronze or a... Well, well, right. I mean, ideally you would, what he would do is would find a specific bronze alloy that was, you know, that's superlative and use that, but most fuckers aren't going to know what that alloy is. I mean, I, I, I am strained as a machinist. I probably don't know what that alloy is, although I have used silicon bronze. But then again, um, let's say, you know, he, he translated it as silicon bronze. That's an alien term to them at yep. the time the Odyssey was written, even if, hypothetically, they actually made a bronze using the same elements. Yep. But they the wouldn't have called it that. No, they would have... Oh, didn't you have a rant on that? On the, uh, a recipe for bronze at one point? Mm. Sure. Talked about this. Well, I've talked about that because there's a recipe. I'm there's I'm trying to think what the name was. Orculum <laughs> is... Um, it's supposedly a bronze that was used to, to make the roofs and the houses in Atlantis. Um, oh, yeah. <sighs> Atlantis's bunk never existed. Right, right. But actually, the, the bronze alloy did exist. Um, and they found uh, some years ago a shipwreck that had a whole bunch of it on there. Oh. And, and I have the formula for it, and um, if I can get time, 
to measure all the shit out and I have all the shit, I'm actually going to try to cast some things out of it with my foundry. Nice. Assuming I can get it hot enough. Yeah. Okay. Uh, say rather to the men of the world, be calm that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, be ye loving unto men that ye may be worthy of the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, Be ye gentle, that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, Be ye peaceful, that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, Be ye merciful, that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, Give ye alms that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, Minister unto the poor and the sick and distressed that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, Be ye loving unto God that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, Be righteous, that ye may receive the mysteries of the light, and go on high into the light kingdom. Fox sakes, man! Why? Why? Why do you keep repeating the same shit over and over and over and over and over and over and over again? Because they're too goddamn lazy to just group everything. Give ye alms, Mr. Minister unto the poor and second distress. Be loving, be righteous, blah, 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 and go on high into the light kingdom. It would save so much fucking time and text, and how many trees died for this shit? Well, it was probably papyrus or, um, you know, uh, like uh, lambs or sheep. You know? oh, uh, nice. But, but the fucking May, man, I mean, this is like... I mean, this is not some cheap shit that they were doing, writing this on, no matter what it was. I mean, I don't know if you've ever looked up how to make paper out of papyrus, but it is a labor-intensive process. Don't you have to, like, beat the shit out of it and roll it and beat it and roll it? and? Yeah, and that's the easy what? part. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> okay. If you know where we are, go ahead. Uh, I think he did righteous. So I'll take, say unto them, be good that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. Say unto them, renounce all that ye may receive the mysteries of the light and go on high into the light kingdom. These are all the boundaries of the ways for which who, uh, these are all the boundaries of the ways for those who are worthy of the mysteries of of the light. Yeah. And I'm going to be a total dick and leave that last paragraph for you. Oh, thanks. Um, I'm just looking up uh, various bronze alloys. And um, silicon bronze may not have uh, uh, been possible back then because it requires a bit of magnesium. But... Uh, oh. Plastic bronze certainly would have been possible and actually probably would have made good swords because it, um, you know, it does have, uh, you know, some plasticity to it because you really don't want something to be very hard. Um, no, you don't want brittle. You want it strong. Right, right. And, ductile. Yeah, and um, plastic bronze would obviously be ductile. Uh, and it has a lot of lead in it. Um, but if you said plastic bronze in a transla translation of an ancient Greek work, people would look at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? You just made that up. Yep. Unto such, therefore, who have renounced in this renunciation, give the mysteries of the light and hide them not from them at all, even though they are sinners, and they have been in all. The sins and all the iniquities of the world, all of which I have recounted unto you, oh, fuck you, 
in order that they may turn and repent and be in the submission which I have just recounted unto you, give unto them the mysteries of the light kingdom and hide them not from them at all, for it is because of sinfulness that I have brought the mysteries into the world that I may forgive all their sins which they have committed from the beginning on. Uh, um, that sounds like because of sinfulness he brought sins into the world so he could forgive people um, which doesn't make any sense because that means sins predate him bringing in sinfulness or what I don't yeah. know no you just don't even bother going down that rabbit hole yeah take the last one for yeah. this cause have I said unto you aforetime I am not come to call the righteous Really? Now, therefore, I have brought the mysteries that their sins may be forgiven for everyone, and they be received into the light kingdom. For the mysteries are the gift of the first mystery, and he may wipe out the sins and iniquities of all sinners. Wait a minute. Does that mean God is the first mystery, or is it Jebus? Uh, or is it uh, Sophia? Yabayoth? <laughs> Whatever, I don't know. It came to pass then, drink. When Jesus had finished saying these words unto his disciples, that Mary came forward and said to the Savior, Please tell me, she says, shut the fuck up, you asshole. Oh, no. My Lord, will then a righteous man who is perfected in all righteousness, and that man who hath no sin at all, Will such an one be tormented in the chastisements and judgments or not? Or would it rather that man be brought into the kingdom of heaven or not? Oh, oh no, no. I know they say there are no stupid questions, but uh, I think this is a counterpoint to that argument. Yeah, absolutely. This. <clears throat> when was this written? Uh, fuck if I know, but uh, the text was discovered in the 17th century. Yeah, it appears to be uh, some uh, retroactive uh, continuity, I think. And the Savior answered and said unto Mary, A righteous man who is perfected in all righteousness, and who hath never committed any sin of any kind, and such an one who have never received who never hath received mysteries of the light, if the time is at hand when he goeth forth out of the body, then straightway come, to, come the receivers of one of the great triple powers, those among whom there is a great one, snatch away the soul of that man from the hands of the retributive receivers, and spend three days circling with it in all the creatures of the world. After three days, they lead it down into the chaos so as to lead it into all the chastisements of the judgments and to dispatch it to all the judgments. The fires of the chaos do not trouble it greatly, but they will trouble it partly for a short time. So, um, shitty day, shitty weekend at human camp? Yes. Your guess is as good as mine. And with haste, they take pity on it quickly to lead it up out of the chaos and lead it on the way of the midst through all the rulers. And they do not chastise it in their harsh judgments, but the fire of their regions troubleth it partly. And if it shall be brought into the region of what the fuck is that word? Yakchithanabas? never heard of that um, the pitiless then he will indeed not be able to chastise it in his evil judgments but he holdeth it fast a short time while the fire of his chastisements trouble it partly okay and um, it's a th uh, pulling this up on um, <clears throat> it is some kind of uh Theological demons. It's the Gnostic demon. Um, 
Gnostic demon? Yeah, uh, De- and nope. there is literally nothing in the Wikipedia article about it other than quotations from um, the Pistis Sophia, so uh, we're just going to ignore that and uh, carry on. Yeah, because there's no, no details. <laughs> nothing juicy. And again, they take pity on it quickly and lead it up out of the region, out of those regions of theirs, and they do not bring it into the eons, so that the rulers of the eons do not carry it away ravishingly. They bring it on the way of the sun and bring it before the Virgin of Light. She proveth it and findeth that it is pure of sins, but letteth them not bring it to the light, because the sign of the kingdom of the mystery is not with it. But she sealeth it with a higher seal, and letteth it be cast down into the body, into the aeons of righteousness, the body, the which will be good to find the signs of the mysteries of the light and inherit the light kingdom forever. Okay, so apparently this thing, whatever it is, can't go to heaven number eight, and it's too good for heaven number seven, so it goes to heaven number nine, and then gets stamped with something that lets it go to every heaven below nine, and then they just fucking cast it out. Your guess is as good as mine. If, on the contrary, he hath sinned once or twice or thrice... Then will he be cast back into the world again, according to the type of the sins which he hath committed, the type of which I will tell you when I shall have told you of the expansion of the universe. But amen, amen, I say unto you, even if a righteous man hath committed no sins at all, he cannot possibly be brought into the light kingdom because the sign of the kingdom of the mysteries is not with him. In a word, it is impossible to bring souls into the light without the mysteries of the light kingdom. So this kind of falls back in the whole reincarnation thing that they were talking about in a previous book where they apparently believed in reincarnation but never used that fucking term. Ah, yeah, of course. <sighs> it came to pass then, drink, when Jesus had finished saying these words unto his disciples, that John came forward and said, My Lord, suppose a sinning and a law-breaking man is replete within all the iniquities, and he hath ceased from these for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, and renounced the whole world, and the whole matter there, we give him... From the beginning onwards, the mysteries of light, which are in the first space without form. First space from without. And if he receiveth the mysteries, and after a little while again, if he returneth and transgresseth, and thereafter again, if he turneth and ceaseth from all sins, and turneth and renounceth the whole world and the whole matter therein, so that he cometh again and is in great repentance. If we knew, know truly in truth that he longeth after God, so that we give him the second mystery of the first space, which is from without, in like manner, if he turneth anew and transgresseth, and is again in the sins of the worlds, and again if he thereafter turneth and ceaseth from the sins of the world, and again renounceth the whole world and the whole matter therein, and again is in great repentance, and we know it with certainty that he is not a play actor, so that we turn and give him the mysteries of the beginning, which are in the first space from without, in like manner if he turneth again and sinneth, and is in every type of sin, desirest thou that we forgive him unto seven times and given the mysteries which are in the first space from without unto seven times or not. You Does that got make any, any sense to you? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Trust I think, me. I think I think if you just keep sinning, they'll just keep giving you more of these mysteries. And that in itself is Probably the ineffable mysteries. Uh, I know, you gotta wrestle with that one, don't you? (laughs) Something like that. Fuckers. Uh, uh The Savior answered again and said unto John, Oh boy, not only forgive 
not only forgive him unto seven times, but amen, I say unto you, forgive him unto many times, seven times. Oh, no. And every time give him the mysteries from the beginning onwards, which are in the first space from without. Perchance ye win the soul of that brother, and he inheriteth the light kingdom. For this cause, therefore, when ye questioned me aforetime, saying, If our brother sin against us, desirest thou that we forgive him unto seven times? I answered and spake unto you in a similitude, saying, Boy, that's a big word. Not only unto seven times, but unto seventy times seven. Now, therefore, forgive him many times, and every time give him the mysteries which are in the first space which is from without, perchance ye win the soul of that brother, and he inheriteth the light kingdom. Oh. Amen, amen, I say unto you, he who shall keep in life and save only one soul, besides the dignity which he possesseth, possesseth in the light kingdom, he will receive yet another dignity for the soul which he hath saved, and that he shall save many souls besides the dignity which he possesseth in the light, he will receive many other dignities for the souls which he hath saved. Uh, hmm. No dignity. Yeah, and how long do you think we've been reading this shit today? <clears throat> Without looking at the timer on Skype. <laughs> oh, there's a timer on Skype? Uh, I got one hour, seven minutes and change. Right, and we spent the first 25 minutes just shooting the shit. Yep. <laughs> and I don't know about you, man, but it feels like we've been doing this shit for hours. <laughs> Days. God damn. How the, how the fuck could somebody have built a religion around this crap? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, are you... Are you familiar with the Mormon murders? Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, the, the, it's, the book it's of, like that, but with he's went to way more effort and nobody got blown up. Yeah, but the Book of Mormon is more entertaining than this shit. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I've listened to the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Price. Uh, God. Uh, let's hear the quad is the Book of Mormon, the Pearl of Great Cry uh, Price, um, Doctrine and Covenants, and the King's New James. You know, King's H James. Yeah. Right, and I so I've listened to the, uh, you know, I've read the Bible and I've listened to the three books, you know, that are part of the three Mormon books that are part of the quad, yep. and uh, they were slightly more entertaining than this. Of course, the fun part of um, listening to the Book of Mormon was one of and this is the official Book of Mormon recording or Mormon Church recordings oh okay um, not Michael no no not David Michael um, but the official church recordings the they have like four different narrators and they swap between them and one of the guys uh would get very, very emotional. Oh, God. And I mean, you could tell he was like about to burst into tears when he was reading some shit. And their version that they have, um, there's a lot of, the you know, God telling whomever he's talking to, for I come quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty hard to maintain a straight face when you hear that shit. Um, <laughs> You can get a pill for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, Groucho Marx had a problem with premature ejaculation. And, uh, you know, he's telling his buddy about that. And the buddy says, uh, I've got a cream that'll help you. And buddy gave him, you know, Groucho some of the cream. And the next time his buddy saw Groucho, he says, how'd the cream work? Groucho said, I came putting it on. <laughs> oh, okay. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, no shit. telling if that's true or not, but that is definitely something Groucho would have said. Oh, yes. All right. 105. 
When then the Savior had said this, John started forward and said, My Lord, bear with me if I question thee. From, for from now on I will begin to question thee on all things concerning the manner how we are to herald it to mankind. If I therefore, if therefore I give that brother a mystery out of the mysteries of the beginning, which are in the first space from without, and if I give him many mysteries, and he doeth not what is worthy of the kingdom of heaven, desirest thou that we let him pass through to the mysteries of the second space? Perchance we win the soul of that brother, and he turneth, repenteth, and inheriteth the light kingdom. Desirest thou that we let him pass through to the mysteries which are in the second place or not? Uh, um, okay. I guess this is saying that if you tell him enough of the secret spells, he winds up in the first heaven, but he's still a douchebag. Does he get to go to the second heaven? Is that what that means? I thought they were... <laughs> if I'm reading this correctly, I think they're just passing everyone. I have no it's idea. Asking if that's how it works. Maybe it's a kidney stone. <laughs> It would be less painful. <laughs> Touche. And the Savior answered and said unto John, If it is a brother who is not play-acting, <clears throat> but in truth longeth after God, if ye have given him many times the mysteries of the beginning, and because of the necessities of the element, elements of the fate, he hath not done what is worthy of the mysteries of the light kingdom, then forgive him. Let him pass through and give him the first mystery which is in the second space. Perchance ye win the soul of that brother. And if he had, hath not done what is worthy of the mysteries of the light, and hath committed transgressions and diverse sins, and therefore af thereafter hath turned again and been in great repentance, and hath renounced the whole world, and ceased from all the sins of the world, and ye know with certainty that he doth not play act, but in truth longeth after God, then turn ye anew, forgive him, let him pass on, uh, pass on through and give him the second mystery of the second space of the first mystery. <clears throat> Perchance ye win the soul of that brother and he inheriteth the light kingdom. So you got this sin repent cycle set up as part of the thing and you just keep giving him the little ego cookie or whatever the fuck. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm I'm thinking liver failure is a viable option at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, and it just gets worse. <laughs> and again, if he hath not done what is worthy of the mysteries, but hath been in transgression and diverse sins, and therefore again hath turned and been in great repentance, and hath renounced the whole of the world and the whole matter therein and ceased from the sins of the world so that ye know truly that he is not play acting but longeth truly after God then turn ye anew forgive him and receive his repentance because the first mystery is compassionate and merciful minded let also that man pass through and give him the three mysteries together which are in the second space the first mystery Oh my god, my head is hurting so bad. That was all one fucking sentence. <laughs> I mean, people used to bitch about um, Henry Miller and his long run-on sentences that went for pages, but he had nothing on these assholes. And um, I, I just... Um, yeah, but Miller wasn't as redundant and repetitive and no, redundant. No, he wrote a lot about fucking. <laughs> this has got to be the worst fuck book I've ever read. Yeah. Um, but but uh, okay, so um, I'm just at a loss. How is it that somebody who is wanting to hear the word of God, wanting to learn all the secret mysteries that allow him to get, you know, into the special heaven. Yep. Uh, but still committing sins. 
and then saying, oh, forgive me. I mean, this is St. Augustine's Lord, give me purity and chastity. Not yet, not yet taken to an extreme, to say the least. I don't know, man. If you're not sinning, Jesus died for nothing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was what Rasputin believed. Mm -hmm. The more sins you racked up, the better your forgiveness was. Mm, is that how it works? Mm. Bye now, pay later. <laughs> <laughs> if that man then transgresseth and is in diverse sins from that moment onwards, ye are not to forgive him nor to receive his repentance, but let him be among you as a stumbling block and as a transgressor. What? Really? Suddenly you're being cut off? For amen, I say unto you, those three mysteries will be witnesses for his last repentance, and he hath not repentance from this moment onwards. For amen, I say unto you, the soul of that man will not be cast back into the world above from this moment onwards, but he will be in the abodes of the dragon of the outer darkness. Oh, he's got his own private hell. Yeah. For regarding the souls of such men, I have spoken unto you aforetime in a similitude, saying, If thy brother sinneth against thee, bring him over between thee alone and him. If he hearkeneth unto thee, thou wilt win thy brother. If he hearkeneth not unto thee, take with ye yet another. If he hearkeneth not unto thee, and the other, bring him to the assembly. If he hearken not unto the others, let him be for you as a transgressor and as a stumbling block. That is, if he is not usable in the first mystery, give him the second. And if he is not usable in the second, give him the third. Assembled together, which is the assembly. And if he is not usable in the third mystery, let him be for you as a stumbling block and as a transgressor. Okay. That's like saying, if they don't understand Algebra 1, let them go to Algebra 2. If they don't understand Algebra 2, let them study trigonometry. <laughs> and if they don't pass, that's your fucking fault. You deal with that shit. <laughs> that's the way it sounds to me. I, I could be wrong. I am in no way a biblical scholar, but um, damn this shit. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know, man. And the word which I have spoken unto you aforetime, so that through two to three witnesses every word may be established, it is this. Those three mysteries will witness for his last repentance, and amen, I say unto you, if that man repenteth, no mystery can forgive him his sins, nor can his repentance be received, nor can he at all be hearkened to through any mystery save through the first mystery of the first mystery and through the mysteries of the ineffable <clears throat> it is these alone which will receive the repentance of the man and forgive his sins for those mysteries in sooth are compassionate and merciful minded and forgiving at every time uh, that made no sense no um <laughs> Um, and uh, if you don't pass grade one, you don't you go through grade two, and if you don't pass that, you go to grade three, and then you're fucked. Uh huh. And where the fuck did you leave off? Because I'm not seeing any of that shit on here. Oh, we're on to chapter one oh six now. Oh, you. Uh, I finished it for you. Thank you. <laughs> I know it's fucking brutal. I think, man. When the Savior, when then the Savior had said this, John continued again and said to the Savior, My Lord, suppose an exceedingly sinful brother who hath renounced the whole world, um, but what makes you sinful is that you don't renounce the world. Oh, God, I. Uh, okay. Um, you can even have the cognitive dissonance and it's killing you. What the fuck? Uh, um, 
Uh, you, you, uh, did you ever watch Welcome Back, Cotter? Yes, I love that show. Okay, you remember, uh, I think it was Juan Epstein who would say, I'm so confused! <laughs> I am going to yeah. have to find that and splice that in here. <laughs> okay. So, let's rewind to the back of that first sentence here. My lord, suppose an exceedingly sinful brother who hath renounced the whole world and the whole matter therein and all its sins and all its cares and we shall prove him and know that it, he is not in deceit and play acting but that in uprightness and in truth he longeth after God and we know that he hath become worthy of the mysteries of the second space or of the third Desirest thou that we give him the mysteries of the second space and of the third before he hath at all received the mysteries of the inheritance of the light or not? Desirest thou that we give it or not? Oh my God, I've got such a migraine because he answered that in the end of the last section. I know. I know. Maybe if you repeat this lie often enough, people like think of it as something true? I don't know. And the Savior answered and said unto John in the midst of the disciples, If ye know with certainty that that man hath renounced the whole world and all its cares and all its associations and all its sins, and if ye know in truth that he is not in deceit, neither that he was play-acting nor that he was curious to know the mysteries, how they are brought to pass. But that he longeth after God in truth, hide them not from such a one, but give him of the mysteries of the second and third space, and try even of what mystery he is worthy, and that of which he is worthy, give him and hide it not from him. For if ye hide it from him, ye may be guilty of a great condemnation. Okay. Yeah. It, it seems like continuing edu education is failing there. I don't know. Uh, I'm just wishing God would smite us all so we could stop this shit. Giant asteroid 2020. Uh, yeah, buddy. If ye give him once of the mysteries of the second space or of the third, and he turneth again and sendeth, ye are to continue again the second time up to the third time, if he still sinneth, ye shall not continue to give him, for those three mysteries will be witnesses unto him for his last repentance. And, amen, I say unto you, he who shall give that man a new mysteries of the second space or of the third is guilty of a great condemnation, but let him be for you as a transgressor and a stumbling block. Uh, wait, wait, you just said... No, go ahead. Keep telling him all this shit. Now you're saying no, 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 stop. <sighs> Amen, I say unto you, the soul of that man cannot be cast back into the world from this moment onwards, but his habitation is in the midst of the jaws of the dragon of the outer darkness, the region of howling and grinding of teeth. And at the dissolution of the world, his soul will be frozen up and perish in the violent cold and exceedingly violent fire, and will be a non-existent eternally. Lucky bastard. Yeah. Even if he yet again turneth and renounces the whole world and all its cares and all its sins, and he is in great citizenship and great repentance, no misery can receive from him his repentance, nor can it hearken unto him to have mercy upon him and receive his repentance and forgive his sins, save the mystery of the first mystery, and the mystery of the ineffable, it is these alone which shall receive the repentance of that man and forgive his and forgive his sins. For in sooth, those mysteries are compassionate and merciful minded and forgiving of sins at every time. And if we keep going at this, I'm either going to have a stroke or my own major intestine is going to leap up through my neck and throttle me. <clears throat> I'm not sure which one's more likely, but yeah. I mean, this is fucking... Oh, God damn, man. This is some painful ass shit. How much more of this is there? Uh, 107. It ends at 148. 
Oh, we're almost there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If, uh, if, you know, if you're using it the turn of, like, geological time scales. Yeah. Oh, this oh is... my God. Oh, be. Oh, Jesus, man. That, I mean, that was got, that's goddamn painful. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That's it for this episode of The Atheist in the Trailer Park Podcast. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, as well as just about anywhere else podcasts can be found. Many of the episodes are also on YouTube. Follow the show on Twitter. At T Park Atheist is the show's Twitter handle. It's on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash trailerparkatheist.com. If you happen to like the podcast, please rate it on iTunes. If you'd like to support the podcast, there's a donate button on the show notes page. You can support it via Patreon at patreon.com forward slash TN Tucker. Thanks for listening. Say goodnight, Fuzznuts. All I know is this violates every canon of respectable broadcasting. Damned cat.